So, yeah, let's talk about the Mac. Let's talk about the Mac. Yeah. So, um, the Music and Arts Collective, man, it's been something that's been on my heart for a while. I actually wanted to do it before, but again, it wasn't the right audience. I think it had to have the right audience in order for this program to succeed. And this, this is like the perfect environment for, for something like this. And so many kids who, who were getting in trouble just on the idea of being able to be a part of this collective of bringing people together from art, photography, videography, uh, spoken word, songwriting, singing, rapping, and putting them all in one space together to have creative freedom, you know, and just giving them visions to work on. I mean, like I say, just going through the interest meeting with the kids, the kids were so blown away that there was even something being offered like that at the school because a lot of kids, they feel forced to either do sports or to do the band. You know, that's kind of, you know, and this year we have a lot going on with our kids, you know, and this is just, this touches a, a very sensitive subject for me because, you know, music is my, my first love. You know, that's the very first thing that I can say that it captivated me and, and, and kept me coming back, you know, from a self-taught musician at five years old learning to play the piano to now, you know, where, you know, I've, I've, it's gotten me, music has been the reason that I've got every, to every stage of my life. And it's just, I feel like, and I think we've talked about this before. I felt like I cheated some of my other students because I didn't share this side of me with them. Right. You know, I kind of stayed in the whole, yeah, I like music, but I didn't really introduce myself as a musician, as a creator in the realm of my kids and get them involved in that process. You know, we'll be sitting there listening to music, playing instrumental songs, and all of a sudden they'll ask me a question. I say, you gotta rap it or you can sing it. Sing it or you can rap it. You know, we just kind of go back and forth and these kids are sitting there trying to bust out freestyles about the math that they don't understand. And, you know, but it, it creates a space to where, where, where the kids are really getting involved. I'm really excited about it, man. I, I know I may be rambling, but it really touches me, man, because it's like, it gives me a purpose. Like I come home, I'm ready to work on some music or write, write a poem or try to sketch out a picture of a vision or something that I'm seeing, because these are all the things that we're going to be asking the students, you know? So it's kind of unfair for me that I have not had that experience myself to show so that I can truly share them, <clears throat> share with them the authenticity of, sitting down in a writer's circle for 20 minutes, just writing your thoughts. Unlimited, unbridled, don't, don't censor yourself, just write what you're thinking about at that mm -hmm. very moment and capturing that and putting it on paper. And then having the courage to share those thoughts out with people. You know, that's one of the things that we said from day one um, is that this is a true collective all, all for one. And I think that, you know, you can see kids who want to try to buck that system you know, but at the same time, that's probably the most important rule for me is that I respect everyone's voice, you know, and I do it by modeling it to them so they can understand this is how it is. You know, even Dr. Endum talks about the one mic, the principle of one mic. There's only one microphone, so only one person has the opportunity to share the, share the floor at that time, but know that everybody's going to get an opportunity to hold the mic. You know, so give everybody their peace and learn and grow from one another. And I think that's where we really have to get our kids to working in that collaborative grouping. And again, that's going to transcend to the classroom because one of the things we want to do is to each week challenge the kids to go out and look for opportunities to model the skill that we're talking about. You know, put it to practical use and then document it through Flipgrid in a weekly, you know, documentary where they just kind of talk, goes, you know, almost like going to sitting in a booth, turning the camera on and just doing the video, you know, um, video biography real quick, just on what you experience. And I think it'll be good for the kids to kind of be able to have that as a, as a tool to kind of go back to, you know, to say, oh, when I first started out at this, this was my thinking, but now I'm, you know, in week four, and I, I, I really see that big picture. You know, I see what um, <clears throat> what having this global sense of a lens has and the impact that it's had on me with some of the minuscule stuff that I deal with every day. 
that really on a grand scale doesn't really matter. And I think that giving them that type of, giving them a coping skill, you know, something that's going to help them in the future to understand how to get through. And I told my kids all the time, I'm like, look, go tell your teachers, have a conversation with them and say, look, I'm trying to change. I know I may have been this, but I, I'm, I'm holding myself accountable to say to you, I want to be something different. And I say, watch how that transcends that relationship between you and that teacher. You know, are you going to get along perfectly with everyone? I don't know. That's, 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 that's wishing, you know, that's wishful thinking. But I should be able to maintain myself in any situation because I'm, I'm intentionally focused on what, what the end game is. I, I was just having a conversation with kids today, and I was sharing with them how they should use the things that work that I use with them, with their teachers. That was a challenge that I said today. I was like, look, I say, when we have conflict, how do I deal with it? I say, even when you get your attitude, how do I deal with you? You stay calm. Okay. So if I'm staying calm, I'm showing you that that's how you handle a situation that could potentially go the wrong way. I say, so when you have a teacher that may, out of that day, may be feeling out of sorts and you do or say something that's out of the way, how do you deal with that same situation when you're dealing with that teacher? knowing how I deal with you when you're in the same way. And I think just putting that, that, that corrective lens, so to speak, on the socialization of what the purpose of school is, uh, because to a lot of kids, it's, it's become a social, a social game. And, and I told them, I said, it, it, it is a social experiment, but it opens everybody's being who they're supposed to be. That's the only time it works. If, if you're being someone else, to try to impress somebody else. You all have a crazy situation because now your, your inauthenticity authenticity causes other people to be fake. And now you're surrounding yourself in an environment that, that, that's dishonest and, and it's kind of, it's crippled from the start, so to speak. I say, but when you're your best self, and it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're that nerdy kid that likes, likes to do one thing, or if you're the job kid that likes to do that. The fact is, I shouldn't care about why I'm not able to do what you're doing to get what you're doing. I should be too focused on doing me and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think that's that kind of Social media has, has, has blinded our kids. Social media, reality TV, it, it's given them a false sense of reality that they think that a lot of the drama and all that stuff, like that's what's supposed to be, that's the norm. And I told them, guys, life is a drama in, all, in, in and of itself. I say, because in a drama, you have your, your happy moments. You have your moments of bliss. You have your moments of, of, of success and prosperity. But also you have a middle part where, where, where the antagonist comes in and shakes things up. And then you have an ending. And you would hope that when you end in this situation that you end in a better way than you started, which is gonna put you at a better launching pad for your next. So being able to, for me right now, to be in the ears of these students in this way, giving them the, these really good do doses of real reality TV, so to speak. You know, and that's why I'm really excited about doing this documentary so that, so that the kids can see um, this, 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 this is unscripted. You know, this is what happens when you get a bunch of creative kids together in a room and say, create. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what happens when you have a brand new school and you have kids from all over who are coming together just trying to find their way. This is what happens then. Um, and I think that that, like I said, man, I'm, I'm excited for what the Mac is going to bring. We have a very diverse group of kids. I mean, from your hip hop rap artist to your Spanish singing guitar player, you know, um, it, it is a gambit of music and young musicians and producers who are trying to um, get themselves established. You know, I told them, you don't have to be polished. You're, you know, you're 12, 11, 12, 13 years old. I'm not looking for you to be polished, but I'm looking for you to come willing to be to be, to be uh, uh, buffed out so that you can shine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to come shining, but if you come ready to shine, we, we can help you get there. 
uh, and help you get there the right way. You know, just, you know, some of the ideas, you know, our first topic that we're talking about, goal setting, helping kids see the big picture. And so um, the thing that we're doing is it's okay to be different if being different means I'm being me. And so the kids are gonna create around that theme. That's gonna be their very first creation that they're gonna do. Um, and so the artists are going to give us a rendering of what that looks like via art, you know, photography. What does this look like? Put us together a collage of what that looks like. The singers and the rappers are gonna to put together a song or, you know, a duet or write. I mean, it, it's, man, I'm telling you, I'm so, so excited. Um, for what the potential of this program is gonna be, man. Like, and you were right, man, because, you know, having Mikey B on and having Ryan Parker reminded me as an educator that I don't have to give up that thing that I love the most, even though that's not the area I'm teaching in my class. Let's give us, a, you know, if we're given a space to where we can create that, let's create this Because again, I was that kid who wished that I did not have to go the band right route, the traditional band route, to get into music that I could have just done it, you know, but because of the situation, I had the traditional route because that's all that was available. You know, now, you know, with me growing up hip hop, this is, you know, I tell my kids, I say, you all listen to music. I, I lived hip hop. You know, when hip hop first came out, that was telling my story of coming up, you know, in the eighties and the nineties, you know, and I want them to appreciate the movement of what hip hop did not just for what's making you bob your head right now, but for the history of the people who who established this culture that now it really kind of it drives our, our our nation and everything. I mean, Twitter exploded because of hip hop. I mean, once you got mentioned about something, they mentioned, you know, Twitter been on this in, in a hip hop song. It changes everything, you know, all the way back to Run DMC when they first came out with my uh, Adidas. You know, as soon as they said that, what happened? Adidas sales went through the roof. Everybody had to get them some shell toes. So that's the power that hip hop has for, for the student. And so as an educator, knowing that I can play a song that these kids feel and they'll know the song by tomorrow, <laughs> knowing that this is what how the kids learn because I love it when I'm sitting there listening and all of a sudden a song will come on and you can hear it almost like in chorus all the kids are singing the hook while we're in the classroom and I told them I said I'm not going to stop you I promise I'm not I say now if you're being silly and outlandish yeah but if y'all get into it and, and it's a song man stop get into that song let's celebrate it then let's get back to work because again, mm -hmm. what do I do? If I'm sitting here studying or something and I'm listening to music, and I'm, I'll, get, I'll pay honor to the music when it feels and it hits me. You know, I keep my pad next to me, so now I'm writing more. So if I feel something, I'll just start jotting some down real quick and come back to it a little bit later on, you know? But I think sharing, even that, just that moment there, sharing stuff like that with kids so they can see how this doesn't have to impede what you're doing. It actually adds value to what you're doing. You know, we've been doing a lot, um, um, you know, like the little, the little piece that we did on uh, It's Okay to Be Different. If being different means I'm being me. Like, I just recorded. We went to the studio Saturday. And, um, man, I sat down with the, with the microphone and, and real old school style, you know, no booth, just in the middle of a garage, you know, and man, I felt, it felt good. I don't think I've ever, it's been years since I've actually just sat and just rapped and freestyled and recorded myself and listened to myself and, you know, just went back and forth. And I was like, oh man, this is addictive, you know? It's, right. <laughs> and it really got me, man. And I, you know, I ended up staying over there longer than I was supposed to, you know? So, but you know, I'm going to drop something, man. I'm going to, I'm going to put, we, we have something coming out, man. And I'm going to put it out there. We'll see what happens. You never know.